Hey, hey, good morning and happy Sunday. Good morning. It is Rev. Wendy with the Community of Compassion. So happy to be with you on this morning, Sunday, May 19th, 2020. First of all, can you even believe that we are like over halfway through May? Like the time is flying, literally. And uh, I know with us still going through this pandemic and being at home, sometimes it's hard to even determine which day it is. Is it Sunday? Is it Monday? But certainly when I look at the numbers and I see the 19th, I'm like, wow, uh, time is certainly on roller skates. At least that's the way it feels. Anyway, hope you guys are doing good. Hope you are hanging in there. Uh, today is uh, my day for spirit talks. And these are our opportunity to just have a brief message to get us motivated and inspired and help us get through the rest of the weeks ahead. My talk for today is entitled The Other Side. Spirit Talk, how to get to the other side. And, you know, today's talk is really inspired by events that have been happening this week. Uh, certainly with uh, some states beginning to reopen in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this crisis, people are, are getting a little antsy. And so they've been talking a lot about the possibility of getting back to normal. And so I thought it would be very appropriate then to talk about being and getting to the other side. It has been um, and still is a very uncertain time. As far as the data goes, it does show that we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. We're still figuring things out. We're still trying to get our testing together. We're still, unfortunately, losing uh, numbers of people. We're, we're talking about vaccines. And the data shows that actually we're still in the midst of, of a worldwide crisis. And so I want to definitely keep that in mind as I talk about moving to the other side, because I don't want to diminish or pretend that we aren't still going through some very serious things right now. But at the same time, on the flip side of the anxiety and the uncertainty that we feel around the crisis, there is this antsiness to get back outdoors. Uh, Stay-at-home orders are being lifted all over the country, and people I've seen uh, flocking back to some of the beaches and stores and different places. I live here in Washington, D.C. Our numbers aren't stabilizing, unfortunately. And so our stay-at-home orders are continuing to get expanded. As a matter of fact, the most recent one, which would have expired on May 15th, this past Friday, was just extended to June the 8th. So uh, still three more weeks for us here in D.C. So you might imagine that uh, those of us, we've pretty much been in the house since March 16th. And so May, March, April, May, that would have made two months. And now we're going into nearly three months of, of stay-at-home orders here in DC and business be, being closed. Um, Maryland opened up. Uh, Maryland is nearby. For those of you who aren't familiar with DC, we're kind of surrounded by Maryland on one side and Virginia on the other. So Virginia is slowly opening. Maryland is slowly opening DC hasn't gotten the green light yet. So I feel it. I know what it, that anxiety and that that anxiousness to want to get outside and get, get past this thing and get over to the other side is real. And I get it. Uh, I, I feel like too, going to the other side of this crisis is going to present us with so many opportunities to, to do things differently. And so uh, that's pretty much what is inspiring my talk for today is when we get to the other side, what will the other side be and what will it look like? Now, there's a lot of opinions on both sides of the issue, but I think that there is a real opportunity here for us to build something different and to be different and to be better um, than ever before once we get to the other side of this pandemic, of this global crisis. There are historic precedents here in the United States. I mean, many of us were alive and lived through the period of 9-11, back September 11, 2001. 
wow, that was 19 years ago, that uh, we were hit uh, for the first time, you know, in a major way by, by a terrorist attack. And so many of us who lived through that can sort of remember the time before 9-11 and then the time after 9-11 and how things looked quite different on either side. I think I think COVID-19 is going to present us with a very uh, similar opportunity. Uh, what does the world, what did it look like before COVID-19 and what will it look like? What can it look like after uh, COVID-19? And that's something that we have the opportunity to, to set for ourselves. And I'm wondering how we will do that. Uh, many of us in times like this look to leaders, we look to those in authority to assist us and to guide us, but uh, that's on a more collective level. My question for you today and for all of us is, what are we gonna look like afterward individually? What collectively, what are you gonna do differently? What am I gonna do differently? How are we going to look at the world and view the world differently after COVID-19? I, I, I ponder that sometimes because this has been a storm of historic proportions. I mean, you talk about unexpected, closing everything down, just uh, as much damage, inflicting damage um, upon us, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally. This has been something, and um, we're all still trying to figure it out as we go along. And you know, I often like to refer to scriptural passages or or poems that I've read to sort of inform me uh, regarding uh, how to process life issues. And so for this particular um, instance, there's a story in scripture, uh, it's found in Mark and in other places in the Bible, for those that read the Bible, a story about Jesus inviting the disciples to go to the other side uh, and get to another city and encountering a storm along the way. The scripture passage itself is found in Mark. And I'm gonna read just a little bit of that if you don't mind. So in Mark chapter four, verse 35, it says, the day the evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was, they all got in the boat together. Now, if you've ever heard me preach, if you've ever heard a sermon of mine, you will know that I am a very practical preacher. I am not someone who is into the thee, thou, though. I respect those that do that, but I'm, I'm much more um, practical because I believe in spiritual, excuse me, practical application of spiritual principles. And so when I read stories in the Bible, I read them sort of in a modern day uh, a translation. It helps me to relate to them better. So this particular story that I'm reading about Jesus saying to the disciples, you know, come ye forward. Let's, let's go to the other side. Let's press through the storm. I read that like Jesus said, come on, let's go. We're going to the other side. We've done what we needed to do here. Our work here is complete. Let's go to the other side. And so the disciples said, okay, cool. So they got in the boat and on their way there, they encountered a storm, a major storm, a tremendously big storm. And the disciples got very nervous about what was happening. Now, Jesus had actually gone down to the bottom, bottom of the boat to rest. He was, he was tired. They had just fed the 5,000. For those of you who are familiar with that story, they had had a busy day. Jesus had a busy day of ministry. So he's like, you know, you guys got this. I'm going downstairs. I'm going to have a little nap and uh, let me know when we get to the other side. And sure enough, this storm arose and the disciples got nervous and they got anxious. They weren't sure what to do. And they ran downstairs and they, Jesus, you know, woke him up. Please come upstairs. We're about to be consumed by this storm, by this crisis, by this pandemic. Oh my gosh, this is something we haven't faced before. Um, we're really scared. What are we going to do? And Jesus immediately comes upstairs and says to them, where is your faith? We're going to make it. You can make it through this. We can make it through this. I have taught you how to go through major storms and make it out alive on the other side. And so Jesus actually spoke to the wind, as it says in the story himself, and said, peace be still. And immediately 
the storm calmed and the disciples looked at Jesus like, who is this guy that even the winds and the earth obey him? But I think there was a deeper, deeper meaning there. And I, that's what I like to pull from stories like this is that in the midst of this storm going down, Jesus said to those disciples, you got this. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is the wherewithal in you to know that you can make it even through this type of storm? Yes, I'll be with you. Yes, you're not alone. I'm here with you in this boat. And, um, you know, I, I understand the fear and I understand the anxiety that you're feeling. But at the same time, I have instructed you um, that you have faith on the inside of you to help you weather storms. And I think that's a very important uh, takeaway from that biblical passage is that um, in the midst of going through storms and trying to make it to the other side, it requires us to have the faith to believe that we can get there. And so my encouragement for us today is to do this just that. Yes, people are still dying. God, I I, and that still breaks my heart. One of my uh, dear friends from Howard University, one of my uh, sorority sisters, lost her brother uh, earlier in the week, and they had a funeral for him. It was a drive-in funeral at a park where everyone just drove into the park, like kind of like a drive-in theater, and they had their cars there, and the minister set up and they set up a picture and it was like a drive in theater sort of memorial service. And it was beautiful and it was heartbreaking at the same time. I think this is kind of uh, a new normal for us. And these are some things that might be changing some of the norms, some of the things that we're used to on the other side, we're not gonna be able to do them the same way. We may not be able to interact in the same way. I, I miss going to, concerts and I miss going to arenas full of people and popcorn and cracker jacks and and ball games. Um, I miss hugs. I'm a hugger uh, naturally. Uh, so there's a lot of things that I'm wondering about uh, how much they will change once we get to the other side of the pandemic. But at the same time, I think that over time, we will bring back some measure of the things that we hold dear to us. We've gotten so creative uh, in this time to figure out ways to do what we used to do on the other side and just do them differently. And that's not a bad thing. So those are the kinds of things that excite me and I hope that excite you. You know, last night I got a chance to look at... Um, a program that was congratulating all of the 2020 graduates. And let me do the same thing. If you are graduating from anything uh, for 2020, congratulations to you, Matt. Wow, what a time to be graduating, you know, from high school, from college. My young cousin, uh, she was scheduled to graduate from Howard University Law School last weekend. And I, she stayed with me during her first year. And I saw the work and the tears and the sweat that she put in and to uh, get to her third year and then find out they weren't going to get to have a graduation ceremony, a, a, a traditional one, but it was going to be virtual. My heart broke for her. I thought, oh, wow, I'm sorry that she's going to miss getting to sort of walk across the stage and, 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 and do her thing. She was fine. I was the one who was more upset. <laughs> but for those of you who are graduating from anything, if you are graduating from college, from, I don't care, online courses, anything that you manage to complete and to finish and to get to the other side of in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the world changing as dramatically as it has, my hat is off to you. Kudos to you. Good job, because I don't know how you did it. But um, wow, how strong are you? And watching a program last night with different celebrities and musical artists and uh, former President Obama speaking to the class of 2020 just really inspired me today, just really reminded me that our world and our nation in particular is stronger 
uh, than any event. It's stronger than any one person. It's stronger than any one administration. We have been through some things as a nation and every time we have persevered, every time we have made it through, we have made it through slavery, we've made it through world wars, we've made it through terrorist attacks, as I mentioned before. Um, there have been so many different crises that have come our way and in some measure, in some way, some shape, some form, we have rebounded because we are a resilient people. We are a strong people and we are meant to thrive. And so I want to leave those words with you today as we look to the other side. Let's get it. Let's get there. Let's make it to the other side and let's make the other side bigger, stronger, badder, and better than it has ever been. We certainly, you know, have have sustained ourselves through this together, and it is through continuing to work and to be together that we will make it successfully bruised but not broken to the other side. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, loving spirit, source of all that is, we are so grateful to still be here, to be present, and to be alive in this moment. God, we first want to acknowledge those who will not be joining us on the other side, those whose lives were lost during this time. God, we lift them up to you. We lift up their families, and we lift up uh, just us as a collective nation as we mourn the loss of of nearly 90,000 uh, Americans in the past three months. That is an unprecedented number of, of lost lives. And God, we just ask for your, your grace to help us process that tremendous number of loss. But at the same time, we have uh, managed to survive many cases of COVID-19 uh, people have been able to come through. And so we're thankful too for that, for the over 1 million cases of COVID-19 that, that many have been able to survive. God, we thank you for that. This morning, we just ask for your guidance and your, your grace to get us to the other side and to remind us that once we get there, we can do things differently, that we can be better and we can be stronger, we can be more loving and we can be more unified. God, give us the patience to get through, give us the, the, the unction that we need, the energy, that spark that we need to continue on, even if it's, if it's day to day, sometimes it's moment to moment. Whatever it is, God, we look to you. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your support. And God, help us to love more on one another, to feel more connected and more unified. We are in this together. And once we get to the other side, oh, what a day it will be. Oh, what a celebration we will have. And we will look back and learn that we are capable of being, of doing, and of accomplishing anything we set our minds and our hearts to with your assistance. We pray this in all of your holy names. Amen. So I hope that that prayer was helpful to you. Um, I do this every Sunday. I do devotionals on Wednesday. Please, if you are um, inspired to do so, subscribe to my channel, um, hit the like button, share this talk. Also the notification bell that will let you know uh, whenever I upload something. I think I'm gonna be adding another feature. I like talking to the people, so I think I'll be adding some additional uploads, but thank you so much today for tuning in. Love you so much. I'll see you on the other side. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.